questions that people had. And I was sitting in the parking lot, looking at my phone, looking at the questions in my email, looking at, hearing the voicemails. I remember sitting there in that moment, just wanting to throw the phone out my window and mm. just leave the whole city and stop doing everything. And I remember I called my wife and my wife said, no, Jeff, this is what you're designed to do. <laughs> you need to keep saying yes to the things that you're designed to do. So I remember that day, I was in the midst of tears, I was overwhelmed, put my phone in my pocket, walked upstairs, went to the stoner meeting. And I remember there was a guy there, he was 65 years old. And that day, he shared with me the importance that I had on his life. Really? He said he had, created, he had created a life outside of the needs of his community and he wanted me to play a role in that. And if I would have said no in that moment, I would have never had that opportunity. Mm. So it was a moment where I had to say yes. Another example would be the things that you have to say no to. Um, and I remember there was a book I was working on with a really good friend and my wife basically said no. She said, no, you can't do this. I'm not, I don't feel right about this. And I was so frustrated, right? Why, why would she say no to something that sounded so good? And uh, a month later, we found out that we were adopting a little baby girl. And mm. she had this intuition. She <laughs> knew there was something else that was coming, but right. we were not able to do this project. So. That's amazing. Tell us about the different styles of decision making. Yeah, there's seven different styles around oh, wow. decision Share making. Share them with the audience. So a lot of people, you've probably heard this, the gut reaction. What does your gut say? What does your heart say? People say that all the time. There's a gut reaction. There's collective reasoning. These are the people that get everybody in the room and they say, let's vote on this scenario, right? Um, the, the, the worst scenario in that is if it's a tie vote and they have to make the decision on their own. The third scenario would be a list approach. These are the people that make pros and cons lists for every major decision. Oh, wow. There's the data driven. They want all the research before they can the get data. anything to do. All the data, right? Um, there is the uh, spiritually driven. These okay. are the people that go away for a weekend and just pray about what they're supposed to do next. There's the passive undecided. These oh, are yeah, these are the one, those. yeah these are the <laughs> ones that will never make a decision. You want to go to dinner and they're like, well, what do you think? No, what do you think? What do you think? You got to get something done, right? So these are the passive undecided. And the last would be the story driven. These are your friends that do the crazy things you would never do. Maybe maybe you mm -hmm. are that person, but they will do anything once, right? To have that experience to tell it at a fire to a friend. Like yeah. So I think everyone has one natural direction that they normally make decisions. So is it important for you to find out what style you are? I think it is. I think it's it's good to understand that about yourself, but also understand the positives and negatives that go along with that style. So mm -hmm. other people can speak into what is best for you in major decisions. Now in, in decision making, is there a different type of decision making that we're accustomed to at earlier start of life to middle start of li middle life and then to the later part of life? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think there's, I think over time, if you overcome fears and decisions, mm -hmm. then you make better and better choices over time. I think there is a snowball effect to that where you start realizing and recognizing what fears are driving decisions. Um, but I think you naturally have these styles that happen. I see it in my two-year-old and four-year-old right now. My two-year-old, he's a little boy. He has zero fear, right? He makes bad decisions that could possibly hurt him all mm -hmm. the time. My little daughter, Jada, she's four. She's cautioned, cautious in everything. She wouldn't ever step out of boundaries of something she would um, feel uncomfortable with. So I think there's styles that naturally happen very early in life. That's amazing. Now, is your book built to help us to understand when to make or how to make better decisions, how to change our thinking on our decisions as well? Listen, if you read the book, I can't say, I can't answer all your problems for you. But hopefully what we've done is created some systems and processes. Yeah that can help you make really good choices. That's the hope of this. Tell everybody how they can get your book. Yeah, so it comes out September 1st, and it'll be in every place you can buy books. It's called Yes or No. And yeah, I, I think the best thing to do is to get four or five friends together and read through it together because you'll learn things about each other, about, oh, about each other's styles. So he's telling you to go buy four books. Well, five you know. <laughs> no, it's okay. We you. want you to go buy his book. That's great. It's called Yes or No. And also, do you have any social media information, website stuff you want to give? Please give it to him. Yeah, you can follow us at plywoodpeople.com or myself. I'm at Shinabarger, if you can spell that. S-H-I-N-A-B-A-R-G-E-R. That's a tough one to spell, but good luck. Also, Thank you. hey, um, just share with them just another. we got about a minute. Just share with them about making good decisions, some good advice you can give them. Yeah, I think that in the end, your philosophy of choice comes down to three things. It's what or who do you love? And a lot of times we, we say we love something with our voice, but sometimes we don't say, we don't show that we love that with our life. That's a challenge. So who or what do you love? 
what wisdom have you been given over time? What's the experience that you have, the education that you have that drives decisions? And third, what is the problem you feel responsible to solve in life? Mm. Those three things together, if you have a really good grasp on the answers to those questions, I think you'll always make good choices. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks. God Pleasure. bless you. Hope you have a blessed time here. Thank you so much. We're back with another great guest. Great.